Do you guys know how Athens got its name according to Greek mythology? Well, if you don't, fear not. Today I'm here to share with you exactly that. So this story involves the goddess Athena and the god Poseidon and a legendary Greek king Cecrops or Kekropa in Greek, who was thought to be half snake, half man. It involved a contest between Athena and Poseidon over who would become the city's sacred deity and be honored on the hills of Acropolis. For those who don't know that much about these gods and goddesses, let's get a bit of background. So, Athena or Minerva for the Roman was a Greek goddess of wisdom and war, more specifically strategic war. Her father was Zeus and her mother the nymph Metis, but she didn't give birth to Athena. The myth goes that Zeus heard a prophecy that his child from Metis would rule the sky. Himself being the ruler of the sky, Zeus could not allow this to happen, so he swallowed Metis whole. Sometime later, Zeus began to suffer from a headache which only got worse and worse to the point that it got insufferable. Hephaestus, the Greek god of fire and smithing, decided to help his father. He opened his father's head with an axe and out came Athena, not as a child but a fully grown woman, in armor and wielding her weapons, the spear and the shield. The symbolism of the god's father giving birth from his head to the goddesses of wisdom is self-evident. Eventually, Athena became Zeus's favorite daughter. Now, unlike Athena, Poseidon or Neptune for the Romans was a brother of Zeus, descending from Kronos and Rhea, who were the king and queen of the gods before the coming of the twelve Olympians. When Kronos ate his children, Poseidon was freed by his brother Zeus. Upon defeating Kronos and the Titans, Zeus divided the three kingdoms of the sky, the sea and the underworld between himself and his two brothers, Poseidon and Hades. Zeus got the best of the three, the sky. Poseidon got the ocean and Hades got the worst deal, the underworld. As such, Poseidon was seen as an equal of Zeus, with a kingdom of his own, though one of lesser importance. Poseidon was one of the most revered Greek gods, which makes sense for a people relying on the sea to travel and trade as much as the Greeks did. Another essential aspect of Poseidon was his earth-shaking powers. Just like Zeus was seen as the source of thunders, Poseidon was seen as the source of earthquakes, an extremely common and catastrophic phenomena in the eastern Mediterranean. Poseidon also appears to have predated the other Greek gods. His cult seems to have been in place since the late Bronze Age. His main symbols were the trident, the horse, the dolphin and the bull. Now the legend of King Cecrops. A common belief among the Greeks was that certain people were autochthonies. That is, they had been born directly out of the earth. This meant that someone had natural rights to a certain land and as such many Greek city-states boasted that their ancestors were autochthonies. Cecrops was one of these cases. He was a legendary king whose autochthony was so strong that he was half snake and half man. As snakes crawl, they were seen as creatures closer to the earth. In this case, the fact that Cecrops was half snake indicated that he was inextricably linked to the land on which ancient Athens was built. Cecrops was an amazing ruler. In fact, his reign ushered in a golden age so impressive that even the gods noticed his city's greatness. According to Apollodorus, the king had named the city Cecropia after himself, while his previous name was Apte. Nevertheless, the city had not officially received the protection of a god and consequently its name could still change. And this is where the story begins of the naming of Athens. 
The two gods that showed interest in Cecrops' city were Athena and Poseidon. Both believed that they had the right to bring the city under their protection, name it after themselves and claim its glory. The two gods were so determined that Zeus, scared that their disagreement would lead to a fight, decided to intervene. The solution that he offered was a contest between Athena and Poseidon with Cecrops as the judge. The prize would be the city. Athena and Poseidon met on the sacred hill of the Acropolis. Zeus, the Olympian gods and the people of Cecropia gathered to witness the spectacle along with their king. Poseidon was the first to present his gift. He struck a rock with his trident, causing a spring of water to gush forth from the ground. This signified that he was assuring the citizens with water and therefore they wouldn't face any time of drought. However, the people were not exactly enchanted with his gift because the water from the spring tasted salty, just like the waters of the sea over which Poseidon ruled. Next, there was the turn of goddess Athena. She planted a seed in the ground, which grew up to become a lovely olive tree. The citizens liked this gift better because it would give them food, oil and firewood. With one voice, they loudly acclaimed Athena as their benefactress. Instead of accepting his defeat with dignity, Poseidon proved to be a sore loser at this time, according to Apollodorus. Poseidon, in hot anger, flooded Thriasian plain and laid Attica under the sea. But nevertheless, the great city was named after his new patron goddess Athena. The residents of Athens built numerous glorious temples dedicated to her, organized festivals to honor their patroness, and when money was invented, they depicted goddess Athena and her sacred bird, the owl, symbol of wisdom, on both sides of their coins. This myth has a somewhat point of reality to it as well. Many olive trees are found till today in the suburbs of Athens. But the city indeed faces problems of drought, especially in summer, and needs to get supplied with water from Alaiki Lake close to modern Thebes, Mornos River in Fokida, and Marathon Lake. Following a triumph over the Persian Empire in 480 BC, ancient Athens entered its golden age, known for its most remarkable accomplishment, the democratic political system. It was at this time that the Athenians chose to honor their patron deity with a great temple, Parthenon, in which there was a gold and ivory statue of Athena. However, the Parthenon was not the most uh, important temple on the Acropolis. That title belonged to Erechtheum. While the Parthenon was devoted just to Athena, the Erechtheum was a hybrid temple half belonging to Athena and half to Poseidon. Herodotus records a miracle related to Athena's tree that took place after the sack of ancient Athens by the Persians in 480 BC as mentioned before. It happened that the olive tree was burned by the barbarians with the rest of the sacred precinct. But on the day after its burning, when the Athenians ordered by the king to sacrifice, went up to the sacred precinct. They saw a shoot of about a cubit's length sprung from the stump and they reported this. If you visit the hill of Acropolis today, you will find an olive tree in the exact same place where the ancient one stood. Although this tree was planted in modern times, it is a monument to one of the most important myths of antiquity, the naming of the ancient it. So, that is how Athens got its name. I hope you liked listening to this episode and if you did, please like, subscribe and share. Have a look at the recommended reading section as well in the description for this episode if you are interested. Until next time, take care, be good and thank you so much for listening.